For those of you who don't know what I mean by now when I make reference to the Almond Bing, though many of you should already know, being that you've been listening to my broadcast, some of you have been listening to the Words to a year, someone out on my own. For those of you who don't know who the Almond Bings are, they are the creators of this world, of this planet, of the solar system, of the human race, the animal kingdom, and your Almond Bings, who we refer to as your black race here on Earth. These are the creators. They are your omni race of beings. This is who they are. They are your continuous race of beings. Right? They don't have a beginning and they don't have an ending. They are not original people. They are eternal people. They are constantly in motion, moving through the space or the universe on their moving planet, in their world. Has no boundaries, has no uh, solar system to link itself or lock itself into. These are an advanced race of beings. They are our ascendants, the so-called black race. They are the future us, some of us, the elect who have made it, those who have uh, transformed themselves from a people of darkness, a bright race, I mean a black race, into a bright race, an omni race, a solar intelligent race of beings, right? These people are referred to in religion as God and angels. This is where the idea of God and angels came from, a supreme being and a supreme race of beings called angels, right? They've been uh, talking about this ancient man since he came on and stumbled onto the existence of a supreme race of beings, those who created this planet, this solar system, this atmosphere, the people, everything that you see in existence was created by a thinking race of people, an advanced race of people, a futuristic race of people. Now, I know people will say, well, how do you get to the, talk about the future race of people when the future doesn't exist? I said the future is always in existence. The future is the future is continuous. And you have people from the future, from an advanced state, who can come back in time frames, in the past, in the present, wherever, and they will constantly resonate as future beings, as advanced beings, those who are ahead of those who they created. People sit and say, well, you know, how's their future? I just said these people are futuristic. They're more advanced than us. People say, oh, there is no supreme beings or higher beings or gods or people that are advanced than us. I said, then how did everything get here? You didn't put it here. If you can't tell me how everything got here, then you're full of crap. You're telling lies. It has to be an advanced group of people, an advanced group of thinkers who put everything in existence, and that's how they work. They work off of thought, off of intelligence, off of communication. They are a pragmatic group of beings, men and women, advanced men and women. They're not good. They're not bad. They're pragmatic intellectuals. As I said in the uh, beginning of the broadcast, well, as I posted, I should say, pragmatic intellectuals, meaning practical or the use of practical intelligence for the evolution of this race, for the evolution of of their race and of mankind and of the almond race, their descendants, and the planet is only or is their sole focus. That's it. They're not benevolent. They're not malevolent. Everything is based on logic, intelligence, pragmatic or practical logic and intelligence. Mankind got this idea in his head of a a benevolent race of people, right, which is where they came with the idea of God, right, They also came with this idea of a bunch of malevolent beings, which they got the idea of the devil. Because as I said, mankind, the human race, they only understand things or people in a dualistic principle. Their ideas split in half. Why? Because they're dualistic thinkers. What do I mean by that? They acknowledge the existence of a right brain and a left brain where you're thinking, right? 
They talk about the left brain, I believe, is the analytical side, and the right brain is the artistic side. I think I got that right. That's how they say left brain thinkers and right brain thinkers, that the brain has two chambers or regions in which, you know, different um, sets of intelligence range and are housed at, right? And that's true. But it also creates a dualistic mindset in people, right? These omni beings, these eternal ones, right, they are pragmatic and one functioning mind of people. They don't have a dualistic mindset or concept. They don't have a dualistic mindset. Everything is one focus, one frame. It's not good. It's not bad. It's practical. Everything is about intelligence. Everything is about growing thoughts and ideas to advance the race, to advance the planet, advance everything that they are in tune with. That's it. We'll speak more in depth about this uh, group of almond beings tonight. I am the intellectual Nubin Minkares, and this is State of Mintel Radio. And tonight we're talking about the almond beings, good, bad, or pragmatic intellectuals. I was the first one to come and speak about these beings as pragmatic intellectuals. You look at everything they do in society, right? You look at everything how society goes. Everything in society has a beginning, or everything on this planet, I should say, has a beginning and has a lifespan and has an ending. You see good people die. Sometimes so-called bad people, they stay around for a long time. They live until they be old people. And you ask, what kind of God is this? You ask your religious people, what kind of God is this that would take my mother, who's a good person, or my father, who's a good person, my little brother, my little sister, what, what kind of God would take that person and allow some scum, some evil person to live to be an old men and not suffer? Right? You would be like, what kind of good God is that? What reason would God have? Right? There's always a practical reason. Bad people, or what you call evil, or, Ill- or we refer to as illogical people, stay around for a reason. To look at, to be looked at by those who are logical, or those who are trying to formulate an idea of what logic is by looking at them who are against logic. See, it's not about good and bad with these people. It's about what is logical and illogical. What will a brain what will a way of thinking hatch from it to do illogical things, right? Some people will say, for example, murder is a bad thing. Killing is a bad thing, right? Depends on what you're doing it for. What is the reason behind why you're doing it? Are you killing to protect yourself or your family or, you know, or are you just killing just to be killing, Right? Are you uh, burning something to kill people or burn down something? Or are you burning something to create a fire to heat your home? Right? All based in logic, all the, based on the reason why you're doing something. Right? That's how they think. That's how they work. Which is why they institute something called judgment, which is short for judgmental. They're constantly judging the minds of men and women in some way, shape, or form, or fashion to see if they are worthy enough to continue on or should they be taken out of existence? Should they be sent out in order to bring in something new? Because when someone is passing off the scene, someone else is coming on the scene. Someone else is being born and coming on the earth. This whole idea of a good God or benevolent God, like I said, came from your Christians, right? These good Christians who tell you one minute that, you know, uh, God is good and they come, but they killed in the name of Christianity to spread it. They tell you on one hand, Jesus is good and he was righteous and this, that, and the third, but they killed people and they forced a religion on people. They forced black people into slavery in the name of religion. They said, and they used biblical passages to say that it was okay to enslave Black people, they talked about black people being cursed people, cursed to be those Hamites, or really was a curse on Canaan, that they should be a servant of servants unto their brother. And they married black people into that mindset. 
And you had a lot of black people believe in that. These are the same people who teach you that God is good. Right? These are the same people that enslaved you, burned people on crosses, or burned crosses on land, on people's property, hung people, but then call themselves God-fearing good Christians. Same thing with Islam. They talk about a shaitan, which is Arabic for Satan, and Allah being against each other or uh, uh, adversaries, right? But then you find out later on, according to the story, that they're actually working together. God sends, according to the story, all the people to the devil that he doesn't want. All the people that he judges, he sends to them. Now, there is some validity in that story. What do I mean by that? What is the validity in that story? See, because there's always some truth behind certain stories. That means that those omni beings, those advanced beings, those high mental beings will send people or allow people to be punished by the submentals who are represented by your human race, right? Those who are your elite of your human race, they will allow the elite of the human race to punish people. If you fall out of favor with them, you go under their judgment. Now, if you carry yourself by a higher form of intelligence beyond the submental world, beyond this outer world, then you are in their jurisdiction. You are under their judgment, the Amin beings. You are no longer under the jurisdiction of these people, of the white man and all these rest of these people. You're not under their jurisdiction or their judgment. Because you're carrying yourself on a whole different principle. Now, people say, oh, brother, that sounds kind of crazy. That sounds spooky. The white man, he in control, this, that, and the third. No, he's not. Because even he says he answers to a higher authority. He knows that his system is patterned after a higher one. And that those people, those omni beings, those omni beings that brought everything into existence, control him. They allow him to do what he does. Right? They allow him to do what he does. And... The reason why they do that is because these people keep order. It's not a great order that they keep, but they keep order. The so-called black man who, and the so-called black woman, right, they were supposed to be the ones to keep order on the planet. They were supposed to be the natural law keepers on the planet for the omni race or the almond beings. However, they fell out of contact with these people and fell under the judgment or under the submental judgment of your human race. So now... They are out of alignment. So all the things that happen to them, why they're attacked by the beast, why they're killed by the beast, the almond beings allow it because they didn't want to make their connection with these omni people. They didn't want to be people who were in tune mentally with these omni beings. They didn't want to carry themselves as a almond race or what they call a god race. They didn't want to carry themselves as people who were above the human race. They didn't want to do that. They wanted to still take part in the things of the humans. They wanted to mix their seed. They wanted to get high, do all the things they hang out, do all the things they were not supposed to be doing. So that placed them under the judgment of the beast. That is where your whole idea on this level comes from of God punishing man, a.k.a. your black, so-called black man and his woman, and putting him under the beast. It's not talking about every other people or every other man. It's talking specifically about the man, those descendants of God or the almond beings. That's talking about your black man. He is a fugitive on the planet. He is an outcast amongst the humans who are animals. The almond beings allowed them to go into bondage because you broke the law. You broke the almond law, which was not to mix with the humans, which was not to partake in the things they do. Not to trust them. You're supposed to move on a different elemental phase. Right? So we were allowed to go into punishment. And these people were put in power because they were ready to keep the order. Simple as that. Now people say that's good. Some people say that's bad. Others who are looking at it from a grander design and scale will see that it was necessary to keep order. These people are not about just because we are the descendants of these people does not mean does not mean that they will show us preferential treatment. They will not show us preferential treatment if we are not in alignment, if we are breaking the laws, if we are breaking their laws. I'm not talking about the laws of this planet. I'm talking about their law, which is supposed to be above the law of this planet, their order, their structure. 
The black man don't want to be in order. He's out of order. That's what it means when it says the black man and the black woman are out of order. That means they're out of alignment. They're out of alignmental procession with these omni beings or these omen beings who begat your human race. So now the black man and black woman are punished on the planet. They're out of order. They're out of their natural structure, which was to rule the planet as emissaries of these almond beings. They were supposed to house and house the power of these almond beings on earth. The so-called black race, those in darkness, were supposed to be the almond beings walking the earth. Now we're not. We are trying to be carbon copies of the human race. We don't want to get back in alignment, so we are punished. I put up different pictures of the almond beings, right? Certain people saw them as reptilians, right? So I put up one image that Dr. York had of the Anunnaki or the 24 elders. I also put up another one of almond from Egypt. And I put up our picture. People say, well, how do the almond beings look, brother? What's the image of the almond beings? They take on many different forms, right? They took on many different forms. And on this planet, in the early stages after the reptilians were killed, and the DNA of the reptilians was in the planet, they took on the physical form of reptilian men and women. That's real. They took on that form. They didn't look like this in their world. They looked like that on this planet because this planet was covered with water, and your reptilian beings were the ones who were living under the water. Right? So they had to come here as reptilian beings, just as they had to come here as looking like us. Because all of that is in our DNA. We have reptilian genetics in our DNA as black people. As the first ones to hit the planet to manifest here, we took on the DNA of the plant of that which was in the planet, which was your first reptilian DNA. Because after the reptilians were destroyed, where did their flesh go? Into the ground. And it's still in the soil. Which helped to fertilize the planet to grow your plant life here. Right? Takes on a green look to it. Right? They fertilized the planet. They were sacrificed. People say, well, you know, how is it that my mother and that my father and them and, and good people could die off the, die off like that in harsh ways and whatnot? They don't see it that way. They killed off the dinosaurs who walked the planet for millions of years. You didn't think they had any kind of emotional tie to the dinosaurs. They walked the planet longer than man. Because it was all a plan for them to walk the, uh, walk the earth, to live here. It was to change the environment by them being here. Because had they had not walked the earth, had the almond beings not have planted them here in the waters to grow out of the waters, then their, the, uh, then the uh, environment or the ecology of the planet would not be the same as it is today if they had not have been here first. You wouldn't have the plant life constantly growing out of the uh, out of the soil. You wouldn't have your fossil fuels. You wouldn't have your oil and all these things in the earth if they hadn't been here. So it was necessary, just as it was necessary for your human race to be here. Where it will be a time where another type of people will come in, and the human race will not be those in the paramount position of power. A lot of the human race will die off and go into the ground too, just as the dinosaurs did. Where you still see remnants of the dinosaurs, and you're going to see remnants of the humans here. Right? This is all part of an evolutionary plan that the almond beings did. I said they are pragmatic or practical intellectuals, who are only concerned with the environmental uh, uh, evolution of this atmosphere, of all the solar systems they go around in the universe setting up. Because this is not the only solar system they set up. They set up many solar systems, and the reason they set up solar systems and create life on those solar systems is for those people to take care of the planets, nurture the planets, and guide it by way of their instruction and their direction. Right now, I said your elite, your white man, they're following the direction and the instructions of the almond beings. They are. A lot of people will find that hard to believe. They say, oh, how are you going to say the white man, he the devil? How are you following the direction of God? Get your mind out of the God and the devil nonsense. 
I said your almond beings are not gods or devils. That's some fictitious lie made up by the white man to keep the people in a submental state following religion. These beings, these omni beings, are calculating. They can be cold. They are emotionless. And they can be at the same time nice or benevolent. Well, like whatever you want to say. Caring. They have all of this in them. As long as it doesn't supersede the focus, which is the evolution of this planet, the evolution of life. That's it. That's their only focus. Now, if people mistake within their uh, uh, acts or their works of caring, then that's on people. It's not that they care. It's that they care about the evolution of life and the planet. That's it. So if it's meant for you or it's chosen for you to be their emissaries on earth, because I said that was the whole point of talking about the elect. The elect is supposed to be the emissaries on earth of these almond beings, those who they will send messages to to follow our orders and directions, then that's what it is. That's why they're chosen, not for anything else, not because they, they like you or they like us or we descendants of theirs and we all the same and we, we all know it don't work like that. Or we all gods and all this nonsense. No, it don't work like that. They're only going to put those in power. They're only going to give intelligence or share or send intelligence to those who they plan to utilize for something. They're users. They're users. They utilize you for certain things. Same reason why they created your human race as slaves. To use people. To get work done. To get things done. That's it. Not for no other reason. Right? They use the white man. They use his system of, struggle, of of governing. They use the Illuminati. They use them. They know they know the Amin beings are real. They know it. The people in power know the Omni beings are real. Only use only the simple minded and the sub mental still with this God and the devil nonsense. The Omni beings, the Amin beings are real. Those who are in power, those who are coming into the seat of power, those who are um, destined to move into that seat of power are already receiving contact from these omni beings. They're already having images and messages generated into their head. They're already taking a different direction. That's why I said the majority of our people are not going to make it because our people are undisciplined and they cannot follow orders. Omni and these omni beings move on an order. They move like an army of structured Disciplined people. That's where your white man gets it from, to structure his government after their order. He's following something that's already been set in place. He's not thinking this up on, on his own, contrary to what the black man think. You understand? He's following out a system. These people are calculating. They far more deeper than the white man and his governmental system or his Illuminati. They far more deeper than that. Right? They're just being utilized. These people that are here today, right, that control these governments are small compared to your almond beings. They showed you that in the movie Superman. I'm just using this for a second to just basically give you an understanding. I said because when the white man puts out movies, he's actually like, you know, that this is a race of people. When he showed you those three beings that came here behind Superman, Right? And they just came and took over the planet. They was about to take over the whole planet. Just three of them. He knows that that's power. That, that, that's, re that's real. That these, just three of these beings, or these omni beings, or these omni beings, because that's who those beings represented in the second Superman story. They represented those omni beings from that advanced planet who came here with power and took over. Because three of them could only, just three of them, it would only take three of them to take over the whole planet. He knows that that's real. The only part they left out in the Superman story is that those those beings who were supposed to be your omni beings or your almond beings were the ones who created the planet Earth and created solar systems for them to come and dock in and vacate. When they want to stop traveling from um, in the universe, they use places to dock and fuel their ships. So they came and they created solar systems for them to come to the planets, get out the fuel that they need, and move to the next solar system. These were only supposed to be docking areas. 
vacation spots, or va- uh, places to vacate. That's all Earth was. And they planted certain things here, and they put people here to work the planet, to keep order on the planet. And that's it. These are advanced people. Like I said, we as black people have the reptilian DNA in us as well. We have it. That's why our genes were perfected. We didn't have sicknesses and things like that like the humans did. The humans don't have too much of the reptilian genetic in them. They have artificial genetics. That's why they're prone to sickness. We didn't have any sicknesses or any diseases or defects in our genetics. Our genetics were perfect because of the reptilian genetic that's in us and the almond genetic and the advanced genetic where it all plays into one evolution. They have it in them as well, the almond beings. They have the reptilian genetic in them as well. And if you notice, on the latest Superman that's coming out, they show you, um, I said when I put the picture of Superman, but if you look at the S on Superman's chest, the symbol, and I've been saying this way before they start making it a serpent, I said the S on his um, Superman's uh, symbol is a serpent. You look at the new Superman symbol, it's a serpent, which they got from the ancient Egyptians, right, because they understood their connection or their tie to the reptilians. Right? They understood their co- connection or tie to those omni beings or omni beings who they refer to as Neti- Neteru or in the ancient world uh, of Sumeria, Anunnaki. That's why you'll see some of them will have a reptilian skin to them and some of them will have the um, serpent on their crown which represented rulership that certain pharaohs wore to denote that these omni beings, these omni beings were connected to the reptilians here and then out on this planet. That was a symbol or symbolic of their rulership over the planet and that they were in tune with these people. You look on their wall, they have all those reptilians there and their connection or their contact with them. Right? So pay attention because the true, the true mentality of these omni beings, the creators of this planet, right, is not good. It's not bad. Get your mind out of that whole God the devil nonsense. A lot of our people still can't get out of it. Even you so-called uh, five percenters and you people who say you're not about religion, you're still dealing with God and the devil. You're still dealing with this dualistic principle of the black man and the white man and God and the devil. That's all a bunch of nonsense. That's a bunch of nonsense. There's only one supreme race. And that supreme race of omni beings or omin beings or those who are continuous – because when I said Amun, right, I said it's the same thing as Omni because what do they teach you about um, uh, a God? They say God is omnipresent, meaning always present, always potent, and continuous. Omnipresent, omnipotent, and omnipotent, always present, always powerful. That's what they teach you about God. And then you go back to the word Amun, which they say means the hidden because the word hidden meant that they would, the name Amun was sacred. Right? It was supposed to be sacred amongst the um, higher upper echelon like your pharaohs and the people who were in power. And the so-called masons, they still carried that whole thing out where they considered themselves to be like the pharaohs and the ancient ones of Amun's court, those ones who were entrusted with power. And they still see Amun's true name, the true name of God, as sacred. So that's why they said it was hidden. Amun's name meant the hidden meaning that it was sacred, that it was supposed to be hidden from the mouths of those common or ignorant people. So what they did was they seeded it into the end prayers of those in religion. That's why at the end of your prayers you say amen. Because those who were in power, who set up your religion, they were showing by having you say amen that you were paying homage to the true and living God beings, those amen beings, those omni beings, those who are omnipresent, omnipotent. And I said when your uh, so-called um, your so-called Buddhist monks and all these people who do their and the East Indians who do their chanting and they doing the Om, they're talking about the omnipresent or the omnipresent. They're calling out to those beings, asking for enlightenment from those beings. They're not asking for good tidings or good this, and they're asking for only one thing, and that is enlightenment, intelligence. But you got black people who are caught up in religion. They sitting up here looking for, oh God, can you give me something for? Gonna get God is good. God, they still under that childlike mentality, and they can't see these beings that created the planet for what they truly are. 
thinkers, pragmatic, practical, intellectual, those who are sending and receiving communication, those who are pulling in and sending intelligence to those people who are chosen so that they are the ones who are moving the planet forward. Right now, I said when I talk about the bright race, I said the bright race are those who are evolving out of the black race. Those people are being put in line or put in alignment to receive this new communication or this new message from those almond beings, those omni beings. They're ascendants. They're being aligned up right now. They're being gathered right now. They're being separated from the black race because, like I said, the black race is like a broken radio. They're burnt out bulbs. They can't receive. So those who can receive are being separated right now in this day and time because a new covenant is going to be made with them. A new government is going to be made with them in the future. But they have to be put through a new set of trials and tribulations because you have to be tried in order to be proven. Just as the white man was tried and proven, he went through wars and things like this, and he sacrificed his own. He enslaved and he killed, and he put the, all these people in bondage. Like I said, he killed off the Indians. He put the blacks in bondage. That was allowed to happen. People say, oh, the white man's the devil. He's evil because of what he did. Really? Well, if you look in your, you look at the world, forget the it's just your Bible, but you look at your world, and pretty much the almond beings operated the same way. They operated the same way. They killed off people. They killed off dinosaurs. They took life. They brought life onto the planet. They killed off, right? They allowed people to be killed off, right? They allowed man to kill off the, uh, and enslave the blacks, obviously because that was part of their plan. They allowed it to happen. They didn't interfere because there was plenty of times where they interfered when they wanted to save a certain person or people. Because they wanted to utilize them later. So they saved them because they wanted to use them. Not because they loved them. Not because they cared so much about them, but because they wanted to utilize them. Right? That's it. God, when you, like these, like these people go, oh, you know, well, God spared my life because he loved me. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Because sitting right next to you, somebody who probably was just as better as you or just as good as you was more high, uh, 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 self-righteous and God-fearing and God-loving, that person die. Horrible death. So how do you explain that? How do you explain how you got people, like I said, who are scum? And, they'll, and, you know, to you they scum and they this, that, and the third, but they live to be old people. Peaceful life. And they did all kind of wickedness and evil because they were being utilized for something else. I said... The lives I said this on um, on Facebook. I said the black race was allowed to go into bondage. They were allowed to go through what they were going through by these omni beings or these almond beings, but as a cautionary tale, as a cautionary tale for the bright ones who are coming up now behind them to see what an ignorant, irresponsible life leads to. A people who are constantly sitting around here doing nothing, depending on the white man getting comfortable, getting lazy, they're going to allow you, the black race, to be destroyed. Why? Because you're not in alignment. And that is going to serve, as I said, just as when I do these broadcasts, they are to serve as a wake-up call to the bright ones, not to the black, because the black are already dead. The ignorant are already dead. These are meant to serve as cautionary tales. Because when people make mistakes, when people... Uh, uh, die off or something happens to them tragic It's meant to be a lesson To those who are supposed to advance And evolve in their intelligence That's why we, we're the ones The first ones to say uh, Remember the parents Our parents would say Don't learn by Don't learn by um, Learn by my example have, have a better life or Don't be like me Remember what our parents said By instinct Learn Don't Don't be like me Learn from my example, how I messed my life up. Learn by my example. Why? Because that's the way the reason why the almond race allows a lot of people to go under. They allow a lot of people, the bad things to happen to people based on the stupid decisions they make. The bad decisions they make and choose. So they're not going to help you. Because when they don't help you, they say they already know ahead of time that there's no helping you. They know ahead of time there's no saving you or helping you do anything. They know that. 
because they know if they help you, you're just going to keep going and doing the same thing. They know that you are mentally defective. And what do they let happen to mentally defective people? They let them go. According to your religious teachings, they said they chose these prophets. According to your uh, teachings, they chose these prophets, right, to and sent messages and sent signals or revelations to prophets or future intelligence to these prophets, right, so that they can set up their religions or whatever, their ways of life for people to follow. And these, and they say, oh, these men wasn't good men. They was, you know, they did things in their life. And why would God or these God race of beings choose them? And utilize them. Simple. Because these people that they choose obviously have something special about them. They're obviously moved by their own personal set of principles. And those are the best people to use. People that move on another set of principles. People who are not zombies like everybody on the planet. They utilize people who move by a different set of principles. People who are thinking on a higher level of principles. Now, to you, those people might be scum. They might be negative, whatever. But they are able to be utilized by these almond beings. So that's why they might use a drug dealer, a former drug dealer. They might use a stick-up kid. They might use somebody who was a pervert at one time. They might utilize those people, and those people end up becoming great people by way of their intelligence, whereas they might not use the so-called good person or the goody two-shoes person. They might not use that person. Because that person is so good or too good to where they're not going to step out of line to do anything that they need them to do. They're going to work against the intelligence that they send. So those people who are going to work against the intelligence that those omni beings send, they cut them off. Because they know ahead of time that you, whether you're going to do it or not, they're that advanced. They're already moving in the future. They already know what you're going to do. That's why when I said what I said about Malcolm X and the brother got mad, when I said, yeah, Malcolm X was meant to come here um, on, um, on a, um, in 1925. He was meant to be born in 1965. He was meant to die. That was it. The end. I said, Pat, it wasn't no Malcolm X in 1966. It wasn't, a, it wasn't meant to be a Malcolm X in 67 or, or 19. Some people about, oh, well, if Malcolm was here, no, Malcolm ain't supposed to be here. Martin Luther King ain't supposed to be here past 1968. There was no 1970 um, uh, Martin Luther King. There was no, you know what I'm saying, these men were meant to pass off the scene in order for somebody new to come. Because these omni beings could no longer utilize them for their purpose. Same way Biggie and Tupac and them, they had to go. You could tell the almond beings engineered that. They allowed the, the, the people who were involved in that, whether it's Puffy or Sugar, whoever the hell was involved in it, the Illuminati, whoever you want to say, don't matter. The almond beings put that hit out. Why? Because those two Negroes, they destroyed a whole lot of people's mentalities. They destroyed the mentality of a lot of impressionable people. And you're going to see a lot more of your rappers go off the scene. Now, your little Wayne, he might be around for a long time just as a living example of what not to be. Then that Negro might go in a tragic way. Who knows? Who knows? Only the omni beings know. Only the almond beings know. The omni ones, the continuous ones. Because Biggie and Tubac, they played a big part in the degradation or the degeneration of the minds of the people. Right? They played a big part in it. So they had to go. Malcolm X and all these people, they couldn't help our people past 1965. So that's why the almond beings decided that they would go. If it was meant for Malcolm X, if he was of any use past 1965, then he would have made it. I don't care how many times he got shot. They would have they would have saved him. You had people shot up like that before, and they lived. So what was the difference of him dying? I say he had a zero, like Dr. York used to say back in the day, a zero reference point, meaning that it would be a time where that person would come on the scene, and then that time that person would go off the scene. That would be it. But that wasn't decided by man. That was decided by these omni beings. They ain't decided by the white man. He's just the instrument of their judgment. That's it. That's it. These people are the sole controllers of the universe. They're the sole controllers of this planet. They decide who lives, who dies, who stays, who get locked up, who be the, who this, who do that, based on what it is you're going to do in the future. Because they already know your mind. They know your mind, how far it's going to go. If they can utilize you. If they cannot utilize you, then they're going to cut you off. Those are my people that are coming to this message right now. These are the ones who are being lit up. 
right? The, if you notice, no, it, and it's, it, like I said, you'll see some of our people, they'll come to this message and they'll be lit up. Then you'll see some of our people who will be against the message because there's no future for them. There's no future them. This is it for them. That's why they're fighting against the message because they know this is it for them. They they know that a new a new element is entering into this atmosphere. And it's it's not new Ben Minkares. It's whatever's coming through or being put out of new Ben Minkares. This message of mental life, which is the message of the Amin beings in this day and time. The Omni race. They are restarting the bright race. The solar intelligent beings. They're restarting them. Because they were they let them get cut off or they allowed them to be cut off. Right, right after the white man came into Egypt and things like that, so their communication or their connection was cut. Their communication and connection was cut in the ancient Americas after they built those ziggurats and those pyramid cities over there. Their connection and their communication was cut because our people started doing what? Breaking the law, going against what the almond beings told them, which was not to mix your seed. Because once your seed is mixed, it throws the reception off. The transmission is thrown off. The transmission is thrown off. That's why if you notice, the white man makes sure he keeps his seed. He tries to anyway. He tries to keep his seed pure, the elite. Now, what he chooses to do in the rest of the populace, when I talked about how he's going to create this one human being, right, which is going to have um, traits of your East Indian, your white man, and your Asian, he's going to create that one human being in the future. That's his plan. He's already working on it now. He's going to create that one human being. No more Chinese, no more white, no more uh, 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 East Indian. It's going to be that one person, that one human being. He's going to create that, right? And based on that, he's going to uh, he's going to um, bring all of the intelligence together within themselves because they're trying to generate or trying to evolve to a higher state. And they figure the only way to do that is to become one people. Now, your elite whites, they're going to still keep their bloodline white. They'll just control the show. Right? They're not going to mix their seed. They're going to keep their seed pure, as pure as they can keep it. But they're going to convince the so-called black woman, who they're going to get to first, to break Armin's law. Because the black woman, by call, by even being called the black woman, being the, counter, uh, the carbon copy or the counterpart of the white woman, she already broke the law of Islamin. It is only through the bright woman that our women, that our race will continue. You sisters that are waking up, you sisters that are waking up to a brand new day, y'all taking your hair out, you taking the perms out, you becoming natural, which is the first step. You going back to your natural state or forward into your natural state. That's the first step because you sisters are going to be utilized to bring forth a whole new race of intelligent beings. You're going to carry the intelligent race. You're going to carry the intellectual or the mentalian race. You bright sisters. They will ride through the through the bloodline or the through the, they will ride through the bloodline and the semen of you bright men. They will come in. They will be. You will usher them in in this day and time. Right. Not the black race. They've already been judged. They've already been tried and proven. And certain ones of the people, like I said, they're constantly judging. The omni beings are constantly judging the intelligence of our people. Because they allow the beast to put the submental world out here. They allow him to, uh, they give him the technology like your radios and your televisions and things like that just to see who will be weak-minded to fall for the messages. The submental messages, because that's all he does. He passes submental messages through these artificial forms of communication, radio, television, right, internet, right, magazines, telephone, telegraph, which is your texting. He passes all sorts of submental messages through these things, and you cannot receive the intelligence of the omni beings or the omni beings. That's why they allow them to do that. Because that's their way of getting rid of the weak-minded. He allows the man, the beast, to put out the religion to see how many people follow that. Because that's a way to get rid of the weak-minded. The ones who are not going to follow the orders of Amun, the true creators. 
the ones who are stuck following the God and the devil and still stuck in that mindset, y'all done. Your world's coming to an end. It's not because Nubin Minkare said it, it's because it is. You've been judged already as weak minded. Judgment day is over for y'all. Y'all been judged as weak minded. It ain't about whether you was good, whether you was bad. This ain't Santa Claus. He knows if you were good or bad. He don't give a they don't give a damn about that. I told you their primary concern is why. That's their primary concern. Why? Pragmatic people. Your children will even ask you. If you notice, your children are in tune. They'll ask you when you do something that they don't understand. They, the first thing they naturally do is go, why, mommy? Why, daddy? And they'll, you, they'll why you to death. Why? 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 Because that's what they're naturally supposed to do. Because they're still receiving their live feed from those omni beings, those almond beings. Because then your nature is supposed to be asking why. It's not only until you get older in the society, you stop asking why. And you just start following. You don't ask why we got religion. Why is, where is, why is there a God and the devil? You ain't asking why is the black man walking around with his pants hanging off his ass? Why he tattooing himself up? Why the black woman driving pins and na- cushions and nails through her um, face? Why the white man and white woman hair look like fur? You're not asking why these things are no more. You don't even think to ask. Because the question is supposed to denote or bring about a higher level of intelligence. When you ask the question, when you have enough intelligence to ask the question, that means you're coming in tune with those almond beings. But the black race don't question a damn thing because y'all are too busy on the telephone. you too busy in front of the TV or in front of the television, all the artificial forms of communication. So the almond beings let the beast have you. They can't use you for anything. They let the beast have you. They let them have you mentally. They cannot utilize you for a thing. That's the judgment. That's how they work. Don't matter if you good or bad. They don't deal like that. It only matters if you are intelligent, if you are in tune. I'm not talking about intelligent or what the white man talking about. Because when he talks about intelligent, he means that you in tune with his submental messages and his submental forms of communication. That's what he means when he goes, you're intelligent when he says it. He means you're in tune with him. But when I say intelligent, we're talking about intelligence and state mental. We're talking about those who are in tune with those omni beings, those omin, or that omin race. That's what we're talking about. That higher order, that higher principality, those who are of the lower world, meaning your white man and the rest of the submentals who are still receiving power from the omni beings, and those who are of the upper world, us in the future state, our children, our ascendants who have made it past this, and we are the ones in the middle. We are the ones in the middle. We're caught in the middle. A lot of our people are going down. Some of our people are going up mentally. That's the whole heaven and hell thing. It's a mental connection. Those who are in hell are your ones who are your general people who are in your who are under under that sub mental connection. Who are still caught in religion, who are still caught in philosophy, who's still caught in Africanism, who's still caught in all these ideas, metaphysics and all these ideas of the beast, who's still caught in that and can't think their way out of that. Y'all are the ones who are caught in hell. Who are constantly moving in circles around or ciphers in that same limited way of thinking. But the ones who are thinking on a linear level, because see the beast, now he trying to say, oh, there's no such thing as linear thinking. Now he's trying to say it. The reason why he do that is because he wants to cut you off from it. And, of course, you Negroes fall for it because he is your Lord and Savior. He is your master. Right? Still mentally. You're not looking to the almond beings because them, to them, though, those are spook gods. You simple-minded Negroes, those are spook gods. There's no such thing as a spook god. When we're talking about the people that created this thing, the people that brought all this into existence, that's very real. You Negroes who are going around here talking about you God and you the sole controller of the universe, shut up. Shut up and knock it off. If you're the sole controller of the universe, then get your people out of the goddamn captivity captivity they in and this mental state they in. Get your people out of it. Stop repeating what you heard some, um, from some old knowledge and get your people out of the state they in if you're the sole controller of the universe. If you can't, then shut the hell up 
and let the people who are trying to raise the intelligence of the people toward arming into the future, like myself, do their job. Because that's the only thing that's going to get us up out of here, beyond these people, where we once were. Not you Negroes ego tripping and whatnot, and then want to sit up here and still be under the beast. I'm talking about you God, but you under the beast. You ain't got no plan. You ain't Nothing's coming through to get our people out of the state they in. The almond beings are not dealing with you. That's why when I say about the almond beings, you get simple, certain simple-minded Negroes. Oh, what's there, some spook God? Oh, he's talking about Egypt. No, he ain't talking about Egypt. I'm talking about a continuous race of people, an omnipotent, omnipresent race of people, our ascendants, our children, our grandchildren. It's not no spook God, our bloodline who are the ones who've made it and the ones who are controlling now and the past. Because I said intelligence from the omni beings, those omni beings, our ascendants flows forward to the middle and back. You understand that? They running the show. They're deciding who lives and who dies, not because you're nice, not because you're bad, not because you're evil, whatever, because you're intelligent, because you're in tune, because you're able to take order, follow direction, because you're set up like that. You were born into that. Majority of our people have no discipline. Their minds are not disciplined. That's why they caught up in everything here. The almond beings are not dealing with you. That's why I always say, you know, you people caught in the world. When that, what do we mean by it? When you're caught in the world, you're caught in the submental world of the beast. You talk all this, I'm God nonsense you want. You Negroes worship a pair of Jordans. You sitting up here watching the baseball game, the football game, all the things the beast care about y'all into. So how the hell you God? You're supposed to be thinking above and beyond that. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with dressing nice or watching TV and things like that, but that's y'all life. There's nothing else beyond that for you. That's all it is for you. That's all you care about. That's all you really care about. I said something on Facebook. I said, y'all always after chasing money and talking about the chase of money. I said, money is supposed to be used as a building material in this present day world, not as a, a resource to be burned like y'all do when y'all spend y'all burn it up on nonsense you and, and get nothing from it. You're supposed to be building schools for your babies. You're supposed to be building schools for your babies. First and foremost, not sitting around here trying to get some land off of some white people. You're supposed to be building whatever money you pull together. First thing should go into building schools for your babies. If you're not thinking on that level, then you're not even, you're not even in the game. The almond being definitely ain't dealing with you because you're not contributing to their evolution. By you building schools for your babies, you contributed to the evolution of the future race of those omni banks. If you ain't out here building those schools for them, you don't, you showing you don't give a damn about the future. You only caught in the present, so the almond beings are not dealing with you. You understand that? They're only dealing with those people who are thinking about the future, who are in the future, who are focused on the future. You Negroes who ain't thinking like that, you sitting up here, you caught in the world, you, you sitting up here thinking about some, uh, whatever the hell you thinking about in this society, smoke, the next blunt you're going to smoke, the next baseball game you're going to be watching, whatever football game, whatever, and you, then you want to recite your little lessons or whatever you Negroes doing, or read your little Bible or your little Quran or whatever, and you think, oh, I'm, I'm protected because God, yeah, keep on thinking that. Those gods in that Bible that they talking about, those are not those almond beings, that's not them. That's the white man's submental version of those beings that he hands you out for you to follow. Some stupidity that he creates for you. Some elementary school nonsense. God is up in the cloud and the devil is under the ground. And the devil got horns in his head. Come on, man. Come on. Knock it off. God, God is God is nearest to you than your juggler vein, and he, you know, he, nobody really know about him, but Allah or whoever, and and Shaitan, and, and like, knock it off, knock it off. You still don't get it yet that these stories were meant to create a childlike mentality in you, and it's worked. And it's definitely worked for the damn black man. And the black woman has created a childlike mentality in you, and these almond beings were supposed to be breeding in you an adult mentality. You understand? An adult mentality, a responsible one. But meanwhile, they working backwards in this society to develop a childlike mentality in you. And y'all, bit it. Hook, line, and sinker. You went for it. Our people are still caught up in it. 
Our people are still caught up in it. They're not moving forward. Right? They're not moving forward. And the reason why they're not moving forward is because they've chosen to go what what is instead of what could be. They've chosen to go what what is instead of what could be. You know, because you can always have you you don't have you don't have control over what is, but what you do have control over what you can change is what could be, what it can be next. What is already being established in the past and what happened in the present, that's already done. It was meant to be like that for a reason. Now, what you do after that, going into the future, the present future, that's open. That's open if you are willing to open yourself up to this omnipotent power of these almond beings and transform yourself. Walk into the transformative light to become an enlightened person, to drop all the old ways of thinking and to move forward. If you're not ready to do that, man, then you're wasting time, man. Y'all playing games. You playing games. We'll be right back. When the Almond Bings came here, I'm going to show you something. When they made the movie, I'm going to even give you a great example of that. When they made the movie about V, I don't know if y'all remember that movie V. It was made in the 80s, right? I think, and they tried to redo it on, uh, they did it on uh, uh, ABC. It was a good series, and it's funny, they took it off. Notice V went off in the air. This was, for those of you who don't know, right, they show you that um, there was a race of people that came from another planet, right? They called them the visitors, right? And people started finding out that they were reptilians, right? Now, as the people found out, they were meant that they were trying to um, use the planet, utilize the planet to breed more visitors or reptilians, right? And they started mixing in with the humans, right? And their whole thing was to breed reptile, uh, breed a whole new reptile race on the planet, right? And they took that show off. It came on in the 80s, and they restarted it back. It went off like a year or two, or two years ago when it was, came back on. And it was real popular, but it was funny how they took it off. That is the story of the Almond Bings, the partial story, right? How they walked the earth, and they were looking like a reptilian race, Right? Because I said your reptilians were your water receivers. They were your water receivers that were receiving messages or communication from the Omni beings. Some of them came down here and they started to look like reptilians. Because when you're underwater like that, you take on the uh, look or that look of those beings. Right? You take on that look and those scaly look. That's why I said a lot of our people, we shed skin, which we call ash, like reptiles shed Right, your humans shed hair like how animals shed fur. We shed skin, or what we call ash, like reptiles shed skin. Same way. Other people don't get ashy. They look at the ash on our skin and be like, "Why is that that ash on your skin? That's ashiness, the whiteness. Our skin shedding. That's the reptilian genetic in us, and it's still in our ascendants. That's why they're able to shape shift. They can go from and that's an advanced capability that our people are going to have in the future where they'll be able to go from this look here, right, to reptilian, to uh, some might even, you know, look like apes, you know, all because when they came to this planet in different time frames, they were able to shape shift themselves and they took on the genetic or the DNA of those people around that time to move like and look like those people of that time. So they can shift, they can shape shift. Because they have it all in their DNA. They know how to channel that to bring out those different looks to themselves. This is real. This is very real. All right? They um, brought that out. Like I said, now, that, now the big thing, they got people talking about shape-shifting and reptilians and things like that, and the reptiles and things like that. But a lot of people do that just to get their minds blown. They don't even understand why these beings moved on the planet as reptiles. You understand? They can shape shift into looking like us because it's in their genetic, it's in their DNA, it's in the evolution of the almond beings. Part of their part of their evolution, part of their physical or genetic makeup is a reptilian genetic, just as it is how we look now with our hair and, and woolly and this woolly look. That's how they look going out into the future. 
we are still going through an evolutionary stage in our look, and our look is going to change again. Right? Our look is going to change again. So let me go ahead and take a call. 757, you're on the air. Hey, what's going on, bro? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, great show tonight. You know what I'm saying? You're definitely receiving. You know what I'm saying? Gotta gotta do the acknowledgement, let everybody know that um definitely um the brother is receiving tonight. You know what I mean? So, you know what I'm saying? I wanna give you those um those props there. You know what I'm saying? I, I wanted to try to get in before you went too far. I wanna remember everything. <laughs> Cause it really is going in. You know what I mean? Um so I'm gonna go back. You know what I'm saying? I try to go back as far as I can on on what you've been discussing. You know what I'm saying? One, the V series. Um, man, you hit it on the head. Um, and you noticed one part. You know what I'm saying? You mentioned you know they had a brother. Um, I can't think of the brother name, but he's all he's in all of the um Morris the, Chestnut. Um, black Morris Chestnut. Boom, right there. You know what I'm saying? They put Morris Chestnut in the last one, and I was kind of wondering why they they cut it off. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you you know that you was gonna pull the majority of the um the quote unquote black audience with Morris Chestnut. You know what I'm saying? But they they end up cutting it. And and if 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 I'm not mistaken, everybody was in tune to the series. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But definitely a good point of bringing up. You know what I'm saying? And um, I just had an original thought with that. I had an original thought with that series. When you mentioned it, um, have you ever meditated on the fact that before the visitors came here, that they analyzed that their genetic DNA was stronger than the humans on this planet? Because when you look at you saying, you know, when you were saying like, yeah, they're coming in, they're mixing in with humans to kind of take over. Well, the only way that you will really take over is the sperm. Or the egg, or whatever, whatever counterpart it is, is um, is dominant to the species that's on the planet that you're coming on. You know what I'm saying? So that that kind of came to my mind when you was mentioning it. You know what I'm saying? And they was trying to, you know, they were trying to take over and so forth. <clears throat> um, um, and, you know, if you give me a second, you know, so you can respond to that. But I want to go back to kind of go back on what you were saying. Um, you was you make it you made the mention of um what was it earlier about the things that happened to us, slavery, so forth. That also being part of the plan, you know what I'm saying, of the armor beings and so forth. And I kind and I definitely, you know what I'm saying. I mean, not a lot of people want to hear that, but I got to agree. And the reason why I have to agree, because I can ask you, as you can ask me, as you can ask any other brothers or sisters that really do have strong will, would you actually stay in slavery for 400 years? Like, would you would you live out your life from birth and death with a weak-ass white boy whipping you? I mean, I mean, it's something to actually think about. You know well, what I'm saying? It's really well, Mm-hmm. Well, here's the thing. Go ahead. Go ahead. Black people didn't stay in slavery because they were scared of the white man. They stayed in slavery because they got used to and comfortable with that setup in that situation. Black people, they it's, a, it's the same thing with today with welfare, Section 8, a job, or whatever the hell black people do in the society. They're comfortable with that. Black people are not going to up all of a sudden get up and, you know, start doing their own thing and start their own businesses or start a motion picture company or start a uh, their own schools. So black people ain't doing that. They're comfortable with the structure that's set up by other people. So slavery was representing another structure or something they could depend on where they know they had some place to stay. They they, they got to work. They got So they were regimented to that structure. That's why they stayed. They didn't want to take a chance. A lot of them didn't want to take a chance of going out in the world and running away. Because they could, you, had, you had whole plantations, right, where – it would just be a, a old white man. He had all them slaves, and they didn't. They they might not even have had an overseer. They would use a black as an overseer. I mean, and he whipped the slaves and whatnot. And the white man trusted him enough because he knew he had their minds mentally because they didn't have that pioneering spirit in them anymore to go out into the world and just escape. Because they could, like I said, they could have just easily. How easy would it have been to just kill everybody on the plantation? 
How easy right. is it been? You cook food for these people. You 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 shade these people. You know what I mean you like the guy said on um the Django. Um, Django. Um, he said he said he said I used to watch old buck or whatever the guy said. He used to shave my daddy face and whatnot and have a raisin in his hand, shave my dad face. He said now if that was me and and I was buck, I would have cut my father's throat. I said I would have cut his throat and escaped. You know what I mean, but that's not in the mind of the black man because like I said, our people um they fell into that whole master slave mentality. It really messed up their mind. That's why, like I said, they had no problem falling into the whole white man, uh, image of the white man as God, right, and being over them. Then they still do that today. Like I said, that's why then, th- th- that's why the Christians, would, they still with the white Jesus, that's why it was so easy for the black man to pick up the Jesus Christ thing and put it right back on again on, through the rappers. That's why the nation still got fought up there. Everybody, they still want to look to the image of a white man. That's, that's right. That's I'm them. glad you mentioned that. I'm, I'm glad. No, I'm, I'm so glad you came out with that because so many people listening don't want to acknowledge the fact that they become comfortable under a, rep- a repressive system and they pass it on to other generations. I, I mean, I mean, no, I, I, I'm a hundred percent in agreement with you. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, so, it don't, so don't so don't so don't don't say it's fear. It's not fear. It's fear more of going on their own and being and having to start and set up their own system. That's more what it is than, than fear of the white man. It ain't really fear of him. He know that. The white man know that. You know what I'm saying? Like right. I said, he ain't have to do much to keep our people in slavery and whatnot. Like I said, you got a whole bunch of people that's um that want to be free and they like trying to they ain't trying to hear that. You can't hold them people. You have black people running off the damn plantation, and you have black people going with the white man chasing them down. So what'd that tell you? Yeah, yeah, that's real talk, bro. Yeah, that's I mean, right. it, I, it was a job. I, it, it became a job to them. <laughs> right. And, 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 and like and I said, see, because what happened become... is, let me let me just say, what, what it is, no, see, ahead, on, ahead, this, ahead. on this planet, there is, because the almond being set it up this way, there is always going to be a master and slave dynamic. Now, they're, they're, the, they're supposed to be the, they're the, they're the true masters. You mean, and everybody here, it, you know, the black man, the black woman, supposed to be the was supposed to be the overseers or the landlords, and only humans were supposed to be the slaves or the workers. That's how it was originally supposed to be set up. But so the white when man we get this in it, reverse, yeah, what, 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 no, no, when did we get this in reverse? No, because not he flipped it because you plant because not not you. I'm sorry, because our um, progenitors. They played a part in that. You know what I'm saying? He just flipped it, and all of a sudden it became so. That, that was a actual mutual song and dance, hand and dance with our people. We, uh, our whatever you want to call them, progenitors, they participated a hundred percent with with that flip mode. You know what I'm saying? With that flip mode p- philosophy. I, I, you know, I'm just, I'm asking. That's a, I'm, I'm just, that's something to meditate on. Like, right. you know, what they did, what they did what? was, they after what they see, the white man was heavy into that Bible, right? And he noticed something that we stopped paying attention to, and that was that there was a still a master and slave dynamic there. Even with the creation, right. when they talk about the creation of man by God, he went back and read the Enuma Elish and the Gilgamesh. They they knew about That's that right. already before Zechariah. Yeah. All right. That's because <laughs> they was able to take from that book and create the Bible from that book. So they knew about the master and slave dynamic. They knew who the people were supposed to be, who were supposed to be the landlords. So they focused on going after those people and taking their position. And they used force to um, push it but like I said, and pushing it, it did a, a flip because that that dynamic is always going to have to exist. There's always going to be people in charge, and there's going to be people under them. That's how it's going to always be. That's how it was set up here. So it's well, either going to be them or us. It was either going to be them or us. Right. Okay? And then do you think the ones that was on top? We could talk about the Angola, the Timbuktu kings. Do you think that they did not know about the Enuma Elish, the Atrahasis? You know what I'm saying? Do you think that they that they that they was not known about the um, Book of the Dead or whatever it was that was the Og Dogs? The, you know what I'm saying? The Netsadus, you know, the Anunnaki, the Sumerian capitalists. Oh, oh, we didn't have it, or was they disconnected to the point? I really think that they was disconnected for real. When you when you when you speak when you bro when you really speak about 
our people being disconnected, you know what I'm saying? That kind of hits home. That hits home to the to me. You know what I'm saying? Be, and the reason why it hits home is because, like you said, if we was in a particular um, position to where, you know what I'm saying, we receiving things and, you know, we metal metallurgy and we building all this stuff. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let's get to the point. Now, we we got to get to an analytical point is when the sister and the brother disconnected from the almond beans. I, I, ain't, I ain't mentioning what, what the white boy or the Asian. I'm talking about us. Like, you know what I'm saying? Well, that yeah. happened. That happened. Okay. That <clears throat> happened at the point when we broke the law. The law was not to mix with the humans. That means your That's East right. Indians, your, uh, your white and your, your Asian, we was not supposed to mix with them. And we did it. And that, right, was, that, that, was, the severing, that was the severing of the communication. That was it. That was we it. did right. that. I, I'm agreeing. Right. When we did that, that was it. They cut us off. That because that was going to mess up the communication anyway. It's like this. Like for example, like if, let's say you coming out here and you saying black power this, black power that, black power this, black power that. But then you get with a white girl or Asian girl, right or whatever. Right. Now y'all have a son. Um, you this that that black power thing ain't gonna be strong in your son no more. Now I got to include everybody because he's like, well, I'm not a little bit black, that. You know I mean? Right. So now he's what strong. happened? The communication is off. You can't right. say the You're same right. message no more. That can't continue. So that's what happened. They like, how are you going to push the evolution of an almond race? But now you got the artificial genetics in the almond beings, or the ones who are supposed to be the descendants of these almond beings on Earth. Right. right. You, you know, can't push the message horrors. no more. They talked about horrors back in the days where, um, you know what I'm saying, the Major Kings was taking, um, taking um, daughters from different tribes and kings and, and basically saying that we should have, you know, I mean, logically, we should have rejected that. Well, that's the you reason why. Well, they, well, the yeah. the, far, the early pharaohs they did do that because it was a time where the pharaohs they would take the women from other places and 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 lay up with them and have kids with them and then send them kids back and then they would ask the rulers of like say the Hittites and all them people would ask, well, when are you gonna send some of your women over here so we can do it? And they was like the fat and the black pharaohs were like, nah, you know what I'm saying? Like, nah, nah. We'll, nah. we'll get back to you on that. We'll get back. They was doing real. That, that's real strong. They be like, we'll get back. To you. I no, forgot the pharaoh thing was you. doing that. You know what I'm saying? They wasn't no, sending their women over there. So right. the whole thing of that is they would do that anyway. The humans would do that. They will purposely mix their seed with us just to throw off the communication because that's why the white man did what he did in slavery where he mixed his seed with the women. It wasn't so much of a sexual thing. Like I said, he mixed his seed because he wanted to have children with them on purpose so that he could put those children over the blacks so he can keep his control over them that way. He taking it that's why he did that. Boom. He thinking in the future. Exactly. That's See, why he did that. No, no, no. Yeah, no, no, that's, 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 that's crazy because, again, I hope a lot of people is listening. And the reason why is because brothers or sisters, if you're not thinking in the future, and, and I, don't, I, don't even, I, don't, I don't even want you to go there on this comment, but I do got to make this comment. You know what I'm saying? And I, I really hate to make it, but it's a reality, and then I'll go forward and then let you get back to the broadcast. You know that um, we had a big um, a big, we had a big turnover um, between the 80s and the 90s of our sisters wanting, you know what I'm saying, curly hair, light-skinned children, you know what I'm saying, and taking on that philosophy of that white boy, and that kind of that kind of messed us up. You know what I'm saying? And then you had ignorant Negroes like, um, I ain't going to forget about them niggas. You know what I'm saying? Forget about Sammy Davis Jr. You mentioned him that on, on the other show. You know what I'm saying? You mentioned these cats that get these cars, these this this um bypass nigger cars to get in places, and they mix they see. You know what I'm saying? And then they don't really, but they're not. But see, one main thing that I meditated on is that they won't thinking about the future of the race. You, when you mentioned the white boy, he won't thinking about just his his bloodline ruling over. He's thinking about the fact that his longevity for his race to rule over another race because he's putting this in place. Our people don't think about it. They think about their little one ass daughter a one ass son 
you know what I'm saying, being an actor or a rapper, no different than Diana Ross or, or Holly Berry or, you know, whoever the hell out here with all these, you know what I'm saying, um, burgundy-eyed motherfuckers out here. You know what I'm saying? It's the fact that we don't look into the future on a on a cross-the-board race thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, we get narrow-minded. You know what I mean? And we look at, oh, you know what I'm saying? Um, she's pretty. Her hair's slicky. Her mind's is thick and nappy. And this, so I'm going to have me, you know what I'm saying, this this this, bra- this baby, you know what I'm saying, either with a white boy or whoever so that, you know, I can go ahead. But the whole thing is that I don't know whether or not we're not, we're, we're not um, conveying um, um, survival to our sisters if they care or if the ignorant niggas is just bypass survival and it's on a selfish individual thing. But, you know, I just had to mention that because that really did play through the 80s and 90s, and it actually has a overall psychological effect currently on our people because you see during Obama's registration, um, 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 during Obama's um term that all of the mulattoes is coming out. Every last mulatto, like you mentioned on the last show with Borum, Boris, or whoever he was and his wife, they all they all trying to push them. You know what I'm saying? Towards this neutronoid, you know what I'm saying, race of people. And what happens is the neutronoid they, I, I gotta call them out and say, Y'all think y'all slick because you don't acknowledge the, car, the the carbon tone, copper tone people, so that you go ahead and get your nudge. You just go ahead and run with it. You know what I'm saying? So well, you let see me all these well, let, let me say this. Go let go me go say go this. Go let me say this. It don't even all that carbon tone, copper tone, all that sound good. Like I said, black people, they want to they wanna sit up here and, you know, they want to go off, of, uh, they want to rest off of the laurels. And, they, and black people are just full of talk. They're not action. They're not about coming together. Like I said, they, you know, the way you start the evolution, right, is to totally tune out off of these people, to totally stop with this black nonsense and this white nonsense and start with a supreme boundary or border of something that's going to take us into another dimension. And that is when I refer to our people as the bright race, I said that there is no opposite to bright, and it wasn't meant to be. There is no opposite to bright. There's no dark to bright. Even darkness in brightness is still part of the bright. Like I said, so we are starting as one people, a supreme people. As long as we keep with this black and white and us against them and whatnot, that's going to keep us in that mindset. That's going to keep us in that stage. This was meant to move us beyond that. You understand? Getting away from the black thing and talking about the uh, throwing away the old ways of thinking and saying the first thing we need to be focused on is the building of schools for the education of our children by ourselves. You understand? That's how you start the evolution going. Not this oh the white man this and what they doing in society. Who cares? They going that's what they they doing what they supposed to do. They doing what I'm they I agree to do. I agree with you. They doing I, what they supposed I, to do. Until until our people start doing what they supposed to do in this evolution, then like I said, it's all rhetoric to me. I don't want to hear no more African talk or the white man is this and white man against the black. The only reason I talk like that is because I'm trying to pro- um, convey a point to something to go further beyond that. And it, so I, like I said, that's 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 the whole point of that. But listen, bro, let me let me let me take this other call. I got another call. Uh, 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 all right, let me let me let me just the last statement. Um J. A. Rogers. J. A. Rogers did um three books three or four books called Sex and Races. What you're mentioning is um in pursuing the sex and races and he had put in there back in the days that they was doing miscegenation in order to wipe out um the um our sea and originally if you go back and you read those books, it had already been done in Germany and different other countries and so forth like that. But I do agree with you and we are down here in VA, we are building schools for them youth, brother. So I'm gonna fall well, back. Jay Rogers, he had a white woman, so he was part of the misogyny too. <laughs> right. He had a no white doubt. woman too. Peace. All right, peace. All right. All right. All right. Seven seven three. Seven seven three. You on air? Seven seven three. Hello. Hello. Yes. Seven seven three. Yeah. What's going on, answer right? All right. What's happening, brother? This real deep square. All right. What's going on, brother? 
Not much. I, I've been listening to the show and stuff, and um, I heard you talking about um the almond beans and stuff, and mm. Allah and stuff, and what the five percent teaches. Um, what I want to say up on that is that you know, like I explained to you on Facebook, that Allah and Ra is the same person. No, it's you know, not. Ohio. No, they're not. No, they're not. Yes, it is. No, yes, it's not. It is. No, it's not. First of all, that Allah is an Arabic word. All right. When you talk about what? meaning that hold it's on, from what? an Ar- hold on, wait a minute. You saying you saying that? What proof do you have that Allah is Ra? In the hieroglyphics, it's you read it's hieroglyphics. In the hieroglyphics, it's pronounced as Ra, Allah, Ra, same stuff. Amen. No, it's Allah, not. No, no, Allah. no, it's not. No, it's not. All the same thing. They no, it's not. God, no, it's not. No, it's not. And first of all, the word God, like I said, is a mispronunciation of the word good or a German word, which means good. So they didn't even have no understanding of what uh, God was. There was no word for the, there was no word for God in the ancient hieroglyphs of the ancient Kemetic language. First of all, oh, all right, hold on, and they hold didn't on. know. What, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. And the word, and the word Allah, and the word Allah. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. And the word Allah. If you do your research, the word Allah came from the 360 uh, pagan gods uh, that the Arabs had, and it was it, it, Allah originally started out as a female deity called Allat, A L L A T. Do you know about that? That's the moon god. That's yeah, not exactly. Allah. And what, Allah and what, was what, 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 wait, 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 wait a minute. You said that, the moon god. What image do y'all use in Islam? The, the image that they use in, in, in um, Islam is the sun, moon, and stars. No, they use the crescent. Elijah Muhammad the brought crescent, in the sun. The they wasn't, is, they, no, they, do, they don't use the sun. and the, they, they use the moon. They use the crescent moon, moon in Islam. No, no, they don't no, use no. the sun. Use Elijah it. Muhammad no, no. brought in. No, no, Eli- no, no. Wait, a minute, wait a minute. Elijah Muhammad and Fahd brought in the sun. In the, star, in the sun. The star, this crescent in the star is the only thing that's used that was used in Orthodox Islam. They didn't that's use the sun. That's a lie. No, no because, it's not. No, that's a lie. Because inside the Quran, it tells you that Allah is the sun, you know. And plus, uh, you know. The sun, in, the in S-U-N a, or the S-O-N. If you look, if you look at the, um, the N-O-I sign, the, the, um, the symbol, it's a big circle. That's the sun. Then you got the moon, which is right there, and then you got the star. You well, know? well the they're not. The well, crescent well, moon well, and the star. That's well, all well, the, the sun, name, moon, well, and star. Okay, but that again, that has nothing to do with no Allah in no Egypt because there was no Allah in Egypt. They never mentioned Allah, any Allah. Allah they, never, they never mentioned Allah, no word. The son, they never mentioned the no word man. Allah. Wait a minute. They never, Allah. they never mentioned no Allah in Egypt. You're making that up, brother. They never mentioned no Allah in Egypt. And that nonsense I, you put up there about Wesley Muhammad talking about uh, the breakdown of Allah, Wesley Muhammad is a Muslim. So of course he's gonna right. stand up for something that's gonna say uh, where he gonna to try to find Allah in uh, in um, ancient Egypt. That, and he gonna then he gonna take Amun, the image of Amun, which you call the statue, which I don't understand yeah. where that came from. Wait a minute, you first you say Amun is a statue, and then yeah. I told you he that. No, wait a minute, wait a minute, you say it's a statue, and I said that. That's how they made pictures of people. In order to make a statue of something, I have to have a real person to sculpt it from. Right, just uh, like they did right. Jesus, right? No, no, they wait a minute. Jesus like that? No, oh, yeah, yeah, but wait, no, wait a minute. G, even oh, the, yeah. oh, no, wait a minute. Even the character of Jesus came from mm-hmm. somebody else's image. That was right. my first name, Jesus. Yeah. But I'm saying that in order for me to have a a, a painting or a, a or a, a statue or something, I had to make it from something. I said they didn't have cameras back then, so that's how they put down pictures. They have they made statues of people, and you had a lot of pharaohs back then who had statues of themselves made. So are you saying that those pharaohs didn't exist because they just they had statues of them? So I'm not saying that, you know. That's they what you said when I talked about when you said you, but Amen Amen Ra was mythology. Um Egyptian mythology, just like There's no such Jesus thing as no Christ, Egyptian mythology. Jesus Christ, Jesus there's, Christ no myth, there's no mythology. There's no first of all, all of them was mythology. Horus, that was all mythology. All that's a mythology story. How you know? Look it up. No, yeah, look <laughs> at the white man, right? Whole, look look, look what the white man say. Look, look at the white man say, but then you said on Facebook that all knowledge comes from Kemet. 
right? It came from our ancestors, right? You said all that knowledge was, came from Kemet, then, but then the song came that if all the knowledge came from Kemet, and then you saying there's mythology or lies in what they were saying, yeah. then what are you talking about? The characters that our ancestors built up was them. You know what I'm saying? That's what they represent. But okay, they so then they saying, but they, the characters that so were then they the was real was people. Mythology. So then they Amen, was real Ra. people. Amen, Ra, Ra, um, Geb, Nut, Horus. Um, that, that represented real was people. Mythology. That they represented was all You said that was, but what did you just say? Yeah. That they represented, or they was co- copied from real people. They all symbolic to us. That's what I'm okay, saying. Okay, so they then that's real people. Then. then that's real no, people. They, they not, they not real people. We real people, but I said, they symbolic you, you to said, us. But I'm saying, they you're saying they're symbolic. They're not symbolic. They're sim- you saying, okay, if you're saying they're symbolic of people, they just use names to describe people, then that means those people are real people. Just like Allah. Allah has 99 attributes. 99 Allah names is a which creation came out of, of the Arabs. That is a creation no, no, no. of the Arabs and they teach it. You that's an no, Arabic no. word. That's a totally different culture. Arabic Arabic came from us. Arabic came from no, the it did not. No, it did not. Language, no, it did not. The, even even Dr. York know this. Dr. If York did never Dr. said that. That's a lie, Dr. Dr. York. And now you want to quote Dr. York. Before you were saying Dr. York was telling lies about the he NOI. Was. Now you want to quote Dr. York. Brother, come he on, knock it off. He told lies on the NOI. He told okay, lies no, he on didn't the tell, he but, Okay, so if he's a liar, why are you quoting him then? Hold on. Why did he apologize to the NOI if he didn't He apologized to the NOI because he didn't he want to cause any beef between the NOI and the answer a lot. He, oh. Like I said, because I, I was around back in that time. And he said out his mouth, he didn't want to cause any, he didn't want two black organizations going against each other. That's why he this did is, that. This, he didn't do it. He crazy. didn't do it. He never said, he never said what he said was wrong. He just apologized for saying it. No, no, no. He said he was wrong. He even t- he said he apologized and said he was wrong for talking about the NOI. Brother, I was there so when the book came out. Up. I was there when he put the book out on far and all that. I was there, okay? You going to tell me? I was there. Yeah, I, I heard the tape. I, I even heard it on YouTube. I heard okay, the tape. Okay, and like I said, I listen, go, go. He never said, first of all, he never said no Allah came from no Egypt. He ain't never said nothing like that oh, out of his mouth. Oh, no, I, I, never, I never said that Dr. York said that, no. Dr. York no, didn't who, say that. We know that the original black man is from the East, which was um, Hiram Abyss, which was in uh, Masonic. You know now, it's ma- now you're going into Masonry that. now. Now you're yeah, going into Masonry. Masonry. The whole Egyptian oh, now, thing. Now, now, uh, Hiram, okay, so then when I said, so, okay, so then when I said that Elijah Muhammad was Masons, why did you disagree with me? I didn't disagree with you. Yes, with you that. did. Yes, you no, did. No, I didn't. I, know I said Elijah they was Muhammad. all Masons. I said I know, all Elijah was Masons. Well, I don't know if Farah was a Mason, but I yes, know Elijah Muhammad was. Yes, he was. That's why he got the title Master. The title Master is a Masonic title, just like Honorable is a Masonic title, just like no. Noble was a Noble that Noble Drew Ali had on. His name was a Masonic no. title. And they, wait a minute, and they named their houses before they changed them to Moth. They named them temples after the Masonic temple. All that's Masonry, which comes from Egypt. And they acknowledged Amun and Amun Ra, which meant the light of Amun, right? which denoted the intelligence of Amun in a man. It was talking about people, not no statues and not no pictures. And that and that and that's that that's it in a nutshell, brother. I now, gotta go. Hold on. Bro, hold listen, on. Bro, I gotta go. I got other calls, brother. I gotta go. All right. Peace. 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 Right. Hold on one second. Five one five one zero, you're on the air. Hello? Yeah, five one zero. Hey. Good evening, Newman. Good evening, brother Reg. Hey yo. Hey yo, the brother that just called, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Straight exactly. up. Exactly. Exactly. Straight up. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. Uh if if you're into that study and shit, you need to go back. Because you don't know what you're talking about, brother, for real. I, mean, I don't even need to elaborate on it because it really, it really doesn't matter. She's talking about it really doesn't matter. That's why I cut it off because I'm like, we talking about the almond beings and things yeah. like that. He listens to it and whatnot. And then I'm like, he, I mean, everything he said, we've been going at this. Me and him been going at this on Facebook. And I and I don't even, I try not to even get into it with him because I don't know where the hell he get all this stuff from and where he make this stuff up from. But it's all, it just sounds like a bunch of mixed match 
you know, uh, 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 cons- uh, one minute he say one minute he say Almond is a statue, right? And that Almond is not real, right? Yeah. I said that Almond represents a race of people, and I said Almond is real. I said that they made statues of people, real people. How do you sculpt a real statue of somebody if the person don't exist? Then he puts the image of Almond up in Egypt, and this guy Wesley Muhammad says that Almond is actually Allah. I'm like, where the hell y'all get that madness from? I mean, yeah, that's that's I, a bunch of crap. That's a bunch of bullshit. They, you know, they, they, they Muslims, and they, they Muslims, so they're going to try to justify following Islam, and they're going to try to yep. make this false uh, connection between Muslims and whatnot, because they don't want to they want to acknowledge the fact that the Arabs enslaved our people. They don't want to they don't never acknowledge that fact. That's you know right there. That, that's what Wesley does too. He 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 does he don't want to relinquish that. What what he what he has built and it's it's built on just straight up religion and that that's shit all. is false. That's, that's all. it. That's all. They they, the you know, they trying to you they, they want to try to think. brother. Do your yeah, studying. They, yeah, exactly. Or if, if you study, do your studying because you really don't know what the hell he's talking about. Especially when he's talking about um, Egypt, he don't know what the hell he's talking about. Those that those it's just yeah it's mythology, but it's more than mythology. You know what I'm saying? I don't even want to get into it, but you well, know what he's talking well, when he about. When he say mythology, it's all based on something. And that word mythology exactly. came from the white man because he's the one that came with the mythological gods in Greece and in Rome, and all them homo gods in Greece and Rome that he, he took from our from the um, real people That's we were right. talking about, there you and go. he made up some mythological gods, that Zeus and that uh, Jupiter and all that other stuff. He made all the mythological people up. But when they talk about Gab and Ra, all that represents you understand? Yep. It represents people. You don't make mm-hmm. statues out of pe- uh, um, from people that don't exist. Yep. You don't paint yep. pictures. Because like I said, first he say Almond is just a statue. He keeps saying the same thing over and over again. But then I'm like, but wait a minute. You put up a picture of the same picture of Almond, a, a painted picture of Almond, and said that was Allah. Because Wesley Muhammad said it. Hmm. I'm like, what the hell kind of brain dead madness is that? Yeah, he just he don't know no better, man. Now that's I, I don't I don't I don't you know I don't even get in the conversation like that because like I said people trying to you know how the black man is he'll argue down on a point and whatnot no he dead wrong but he gonna argue just because he going to I don't want that nigga to know more than me who that nigga think he is that's that mentality yeah that's the mentality that nigga don't know more than me I'm gonna still argue no matter how stupid the argument's not no matter how illogical what I'm saying don't even make no sense but I'm gonna still argue anyway yeah he should he should go back and listen to the show and listen to himself. Well, you know how religion you know how religious people are though, man. They're not gonna they're Well not gonna he's five percent. He a five percent or so. Oh god. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that 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 says oh. it all, right? Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey hey, I'ma fall back I'm gonna fall back. I'm gonna talk to you soon, brother. All right. Good show. All right, Good show. All right. All right. Thank you. Peace. All right. I'm gonna take one more call. Five one two. Five one two. Hey, how you doing, brother, man? All right, how you doing? I'm all right, man. I got a question, a good question for you. Hope you don't get offended. I, I ain't coming, no conflict, man, because this, this ain't no fight. Like, when I, when I come and discuss and talk with you, I hope you don't get it as I'm an opposing force against what you're saying and no shit like that, you know what I'm saying? But I got a question for you. Um, when I say I'm going to say a couple of words, and I want you to tell me how, how, will you feel, how do you feel about this? phrase when you hear somebody say fuck god it, it, I don't, i'm not like like because we not like you say you don't use god terms and stuff no more and we we talk you i hear you talk about religion and shit a lot blah 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 but uh, you remember people tell us that christianity was given to us from our slave masters and this and that so you got to remember because it logically if uh, our slave master stole this from us and gave, gave it back to us and rearranged it and switched all the names of it. And and then you wonder why our, our people still hold on to it. They hold on to it because it was theirs originally. They Yeah, they they, they smart enough to know that these names have been changed around. But if you I, I know that they didn't read the Bible and be looking like these, these are our ancestors. They have white names and shit now. You know what I'm saying? Like we we might even have to change the Bible up to where it ain't no more Jesus is 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 uh, Jerron or something. You know what I'm saying? But like, and then if they tell us that 
this, they gave us this English language. Our master gave us this language. Our enemy gave us this language, and we speaking it, and we trying to get on a higher level with them and try to talk with them. Now, sometimes you got to be like, if our enemy gave us this language, why wouldn't we pervert it and twist it to where the enemy don't even want to speak its, lang- its own language no more? And then well, we, first, we start creating our own language. Well, first of all, let me stop you for a second. English right. did not come from the white man. Okay, I said this before. I, two I, shows I never ago. said. I never said English like, did. But you but, said the but white you know man that, gave us English. Oh, oh, no, no, but I didn't. I didn't say the white man gave us this language. This is what other people, the conscious community, and all these other people are saying. Oh, the white man well, did this. The white man did. Well, and they would be wrong. Tell us, they, well, they would right. be wrong because, they, like I said, the uh, almond beings purposely made English the premier language in this day and time. Nothing goes down on this planet without them, without their say. So stop with this white man, this and the white man. And he ain't got nothing to do with what goes on here. He is a he is a puppet being utilized too. This is what the black man ain't gonna get into his head yet. And maybe it gotta be banged into his head till he gets it. That you, your actions on this planet as an irresponsible people is why these people were cho- chosen to be in, be in charge. And until our people well, Get, hold on, let me finish. Until our people you go. start, why, start with the evolution of themselves and the focus only on themselves and the opening of a reception to a whole future, a different future where it don't involve these people or you're not putting any focus or energy on these people. Because when you say black, you automatically put focus on these people white because black and white is opposite. That's why we said we did away with the black thing. We did away with the God thing. Anything that has their signature on it, we're gradually doing away with in the bright race. That's why we said that because we're focusing on the supremacy of ourselves. It's nothing against the white man. It's nothing against the black man. It's against a, It's about a race of people who are in a state of evolution right now. And you're right. But like I said, because I told you, we, we're not trying to hold on to the term black and because we already know, like, well, now I can't even speak for everybody in the black race. I'm going to say that I already know that, all right, that term black is obsolete. That's just part of the, but, the, the system that they created. But but, but, not, but, the but then, but then but that, all, hold on, let me, let me just say this once. I'm going to cut you up, but I'm going to say this. It's not even just the terminology. It's your attitude. It's how your mentality. Y'all still act like a bunch of carbon copy white people. The degenerate behavior that you black men exude in this, in this country from smoking weed to listening to hip hop, which is really another form of degenerate rock music. You understand? To being faggots and lesbians or whatever the hell y'all doing inside, like popping mollies and all that. Y'all still doing that behavior. So it don't matter if you call yourself black or whatever. You still got the degenerate ways of the white man. So that well, until y'all ready to change that, it. until y'all ready to change that, then it's not it's all that. Don't you call yourself orange? It don't matter. You right, you right. But but y'all you black men ain't willing to like, stop. Y'all ain't ready to stop doing what y'all doing in the hood. Y'all ain't ready to stop smoking weed. You ain't ready to stop shooting your brother down. You ain't ready to stop being disrespectful to each other. You ain't nah, ready to start but, but taking care of your that, babies. It's, it's, y'all ain't ready to start taking it's, care of your babies and leaving babies all over the damn hood for Maury Povich to come up and put a show on and make fun of you Negroes. Y'all ain't ready to stop doing that. Then all this, all this, all this talk is immaterial. No, it, it ain't that we don't want that. We we want that desperately. We desperately need it, and we desperately want it. We're trying to find a teacher that. that well, that's what we advocate in the state of mental. That's what we advocate. Yeah, but you can't come. But you can't come like the old way. The black man want to bring his old ways with him. His bad habit. He ain't trying to change. He ain't trying to stop. Well, remember, doing look, I, I told you. I told you on my end. Oh, we we act a little ignorant. We do this. But, all right, I know that I'm a little ignorant. That's why I'm seeking intelligence. That's why I uh, you, I got attracted to your radio station. I found something intelligent going on that could actually cure my ignorance. You know what I'm saying? But then been listening for a little while, and it's like, damn, this is kind of the same ignorance going on. It just, see, it's see, you, see there you go. Now. There you go. You just can't do it, can you, black man? You can't. You, know, you got to turn around and start and You don't you know, understand. Wait a minute. Stop. Look, Let me stop. You want to fight with me. I don't want to fight with you, just, you, look brother. Look what you just did. Look what you just did. Well, this is kind of ignorant right here. What I mean? See? No, see? I'm just, now you hear you. Now see? No, I'm, I'm looking for a clarification. That's all it is because I'm not saying that what, what you got going. That was just my, like, like I told you, I just had an ignorant perception on it. I didn't, I'm no, no, no. I'm not saying what you're doing is ignorant. That's why I continue to listen to you, man. It's still getting Okay, so if you, you continue, to, okay, so if you continue to listen to me, understand that when I do certain things, when I direct my attention to certain things, when I use certain terminology, I'm doing it for an intelligent reason. 
I'm not doing it to take shots at anybody. I told you this is not personal. You understand? You this is, I'm, I'm not doing it for that. But I, when people come up here playing right. games and wanna, you know, and, and, and wanna and trying to make it personal between between me and them, that's when I'm like, yo, you know what? I ain't got time for this. I'm focused on something. I'm we really putting in work here in New York, and we're gonna spread this out nationally. That's what I'm talking about. This is what our focus is. And I feel you. And, and I'm gonna say one more thing, and I'm gonna let you get back to it. Like, all right, just don't, just, just don't get so. Now, I'm not talking to you, but I'm talking to everybody. Like, just don't let everybody just get consumed in all the, the, the negative stuff that, that the uh the black races or the even the, the white race, what they doing, all the scandals and smoking this and that and because they are doing things when nobody else is looking. Like you say y'all being productive in New York, I told you we're down here being productive too. But all of our stuff don't get broadcast. We we buy school supplies for kids, we getting them computers and all Making, well, then you sure should you should get up there and broadcast it. Then you should get up there. You should get a blog talk show and get more people and get out here and broadcast what you doing. You yeah, should. My thing that's is, what we, is, we, that's, my thing I, is, I'm not. not I get up here. Everything I do, I, I make known on the radio broadcast because we are building. I make my work known. I make because I'm I'm trying to build a state of mental. I'm not hiding behind nothing. I'm not saying you, but I'm not hiding behind nothing. I'm out here putting the work, and I'm out here teaching my people. I'm out here in the streets in New York. We out here doing this radio broadcast to reach more people and build a state of mental for this reason. So anybody who's sitting up here claiming they doing this, that, and the third, but it's not in the, in the TV and the radio, it ain't supposed to be. You are supposed to make your own press. You are supposed to make your own uh, 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 broadcast and things like that. Whatever things you can utilize like this. Uh, a medium, you're supposed to utilize that for that. But and we listen, doing brother, that. I got, me, listen, but listen, brother, I got you, seven you minutes left. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm not a spokesperson. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not, a, I'm not the spokesperson. I'm just one voice out of my group. We'll, you'll hear our spokespeople uh, promoting our stuff. Well, now, you, we, we'll get our own radio station broadcast, like you say. But anyway, man, you enjoy your evening, man, and I keep you doing speaking intelligent. All right. Thank you. All right, yep. we about to do, we about to do these last questions. We got like seven minutes left to go. All right, let me see. All right, uh, I hope I answered all these questions tonight about the almond beings and how they really are and how they're focused on. All right, the truth about the God, the so-called quote-unquote God race. This is a race of people. It's not no mythology or no simple-minded spook gods or unseen. These are real people that created the real things that we see in existence. And all you black men sitting up here calling yourself gods, you ain't created a damn thing. You still under the white man. So I don't want to hear nothing about your soul control of the universe madness. Get your people out of the captivity if you're the soul controller. That's what I say to you. Anyway, are the creators of the world good or evil? No, they're not good. Or, they're not good or evil. Those are submental ways of thinking from man. The creators of the world are omni beings, the omni beings who have gone and created other solar systems and other worlds. Have gone on and create solar systems and other worlds are uh, pragmatic intellectuals. What I mean by that is they are practical. They deal with practical intelligence for the evolution of the worlds they set up and create. That's how they do it, and they deal with people who can receive their intelligence. You people who can't receive their intelligence, like I said, they, you serve no purpose. So after a while, they'll just go ahead and get rid of you, all right? Um, do they care about mankind? No, they don't. They care about only those people that they can utilize. They don't care about mankind as a whole or people as a whole. They care about only those they can utilize to get the message across to for the further furthering of the evolution of this planet, because while things are being furthered in this planet, but um, things are becoming greater for them. Because if we don't further ourselves, and they are our ascendants, then they're not going to be furthered. So they're looking for those people that are going to further the intelligence. Because as we move ahead, they move ahead. All right. What is their focus in the world? Evolution, mental evolution, physical evolution of this world of people and those people who are meant to evolve. That's what the focus is. All right. Not on good, not on bad. It's on the intelligence. Why? 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 Why do you do this? Why do you do that? Questions. Something that they tell you not to ask in religion. Something that, like I said, why religion thrives is because you don't ask the questions. You deal with belief. And they tell you to deal with belief because they know if you start asking questions, then their stuff going to fall at, They're going to fall apart. Their little belief system that they control you under is going to fall apart in that submental world that you're in now. Right? Why did they really create the earth and people? They created the earth and people, like I said, they created the earth as a docking station 
while they're moving through the universe. They created solar systems as docking places so they can get materials, so they can get gold and all these other things out of the earth for fuel and things like that. And they created people as caretakers and workers and landlords or overseers of the place. They left themselves here, or they manifested themselves here as the so-called black race, right? And they created the human race, your whites, your East Indians, and your uh, Chinese, all of them, to work. There's a master-slave dynamic on this planet, and they started it first. And because we didn't stay in our place, we fell under that, and we went into bondage to these people. That's how it really happened. All right? Um, will, will they destroy the world and uh, time and the people? Yeah, they're going to destroy a lot of people, a lot of people who are useless. Same way they destroyed the dinosaurs because the dinosaurs were no longer useful in the evolution of the planet. They got rid of them. They sent, they hurled, um, they threw a bunch of uh, uh, meteorites. They caused a meteorite shower to come here to kill off the dinosaurs purposely. They engineered all that. Everything you see here in this society on this planet, on in this in this planet, is engineered by them. It's not from the white man. Even the uh, even the uh, um, technology the white man has is from them. All right. They engineer everything. They decide who lives and who dies. Not the white man, not no man, not the black man, just them. And that's it. And some of the people who pass off of this planet and whatnot, the ones who are meant to uh, 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 receive, y'all going into the sun, y'all going to be recharged, and some of you will be sent back into this world, into the modern day, or some of you will be sent forward into their world. But you will be sent someplace else. You go to the sun which is the light that they talk about going into the light to be recharged to come back into this world or go into the future world. That's how that works. That's how death works, life after death. Some people are burned out, but the energy will continue in some way, shape, or form. And that is it. Join us. Maybe I might do a special broadcast Saturday. Might not. I might, you know, depends on how I feel. Um... I am the intellectual Nubin Minkar Rays. This has been State of Mintel Radio. The next State of Mintel uh, reception is going to be the Black Evolution. It's going to be taking place April 28th, Sunday, April 28th, the last Sunday of the month. Sunday, April 28th. All right? And what I'm going to play is short and sweet, all right, to take me out of here. And that is Earth, Wind, and Fire, Shining Star. Once again, I am the intellectual Nubin Minkar Rays. This is State of Mintel Radio. Good night. It's the Republic of Mental Act Rising out the black race to the white race Out the black race to the white race It's the Republic of Mental Act Black race to the white race If it's hell, I'm in, then it's hell us They tried everything just to spell us Fed us religion, gave us fake gods Through all of that, we beat the odds Now we coming together under one flag Colors red, gold, and blue Superman, superwoman, that's me and you The infinite capabilities that we can do 